Good morning and welcome to Almas Market Mornings, your daily dose of global financial updates with me, Paraj. Yesterday, we had the US retail sales data. Even though the headline numbers were not so good, currency markets were broadly where they were with not so major moves. Of course, JK will decode these numbers and tell us why. Uh, but there are some good data releases scheduled for today, including the UK and Eurozone CPI. JK, talk to us about the retail sales number and any expectations out of these upcoming uh, inflation figures from UK and Eurozone? Yeah, good morning. Um, yes, first on to the retail sales number. It was a mixed number uh, on the uh, you know US uh, numbers for the month of June. Uh, headline printed weaker at 0.2% versus 0.5% forecast. But uh, the much more important uh, to GDP the control group sales, uh, uh, where, which come under the uh, PCE, uh, doubled the forecast, printing 0.6% versus 0.3% expected. And that was uh, taken as a very positive number by the market. And uh, <clears throat> June's solid rise in the May's of contribution to core retail sales suggests that the consumer spending, which account for more than two-thirds of the U.S. economy, has continued to grow uh, faster. In fact, we had also another number on the industrial production, uh, which fell for the second month in a row. Uh, obviously, uh, industrial production has taken the biggest hit from the rising uh, finance costs, but it also indicates uh, uh, you know, a lot of consumer spending, which is moving away from goods to services, and uh, therefore it is uh, nothing new. Uh, so overall, uh, US economy continues to paint a mixed picture because we had a, a strong number on uh, the Empire State Manufacturing on Monday. Now, uh, the uh, U.S. data apart, uh, the um, you know people uh, cannot take their eyes off the central banks and uh, inflation. And yesterday, RBI board member uh, in their <clears throat> uh, in their minutes uh, stated that uh, uh, more tightening may be required. Uh, at the August meeting and the current stance of monetary policy was clearly restrictive and would become more so. Uh, that was from Australia. Then we had uh, the, uh, you know, the Canadian uh, inflation, annual inflation dropping more than expected to 27 month low. That's, you know, lower than uh, uh, June, uh, Jan 22, and uh, at a low of 2.8% in June. And excluding the food and energy, core prices rose only 3.5% compared to 4.4% gain uh, in May. So we have, uh, apart from US and Eurozone, we have inflation falling in Canada as well. Uh, now, yes, the focus will now turn to uh, UK inflation data, uh, particularly today, uh, because uh, there is a suggestion that it will be falling from 8.7% 8 8 recorded in uh, April and May, uh, but we will still uh, probably be higher than US and uh, Eurozone. Uh, but if you look at the US yields, uh, the 10-year yield has actually fallen 13 basis points, so market is definitely expecting uh, uh, quite a bit of a moderation in UK inflation number, and that's very something uh, the whole market will be looking forward to because uh, there's a huge rally that has happened in the UK pound, and uh, the strong pound, along with uh, the high interest rates, is not good for uh, UK economy to show any sort of growth. Then, uh, sticking with the uh, you know central bankers, uh, we had the uh, a statement from one of the ECB hawk who sounded almost dovish, uh, something out of the blue. And uh, Mr. Klaus Nott said that for July, I think it is a necessity uh, for raising rate, but the Eurozone, but then uh, beyond July, it is, you know, very, very uncertain. Now, Eurozone yields were down across the, you know, the countries in the region, German and uh, France, uh, you know, 10 year yields were down uh, 11 to 12 basis points. Spain was 13 basis points down. Italy, as much as 17 point, uh, basis points at one point of time. Now, uh, compare these with the US yields, which were hardly moving yesterday. Two year yield was just, in fact, one, one basis point higher, and 10 year yield was about uh, one to two basis points lower. So, there, there has been a widening of yield, differ yield difference between. Uh, U.S. and uh, other countries, including U.K., and that has actually supported the uh, dollar as well. Uh, so that might be also behind the euro stalling against uh, the U.S.D. And 
uh, while uh, euro has not made a big move, there are signs that the dollar is uh, kind of trying to establish a bottom ahead of a 99 uh, uh, figure. Uh, we, we we have New Zealand dollar, which is you know which is of course a minor currency, uh, has actually fallen two percent in the last uh, two sessions. Uh, Australian dollar is down nearly 1.2 percent. Chinese yuan, in fact, uh, uh, after the Chinese central bank fixed. Uh, lower than forecast uh, is in fact back up at uh, 7.21, uh, you know, and in the onshore itself, it is trading closer to 7.2050. So there has been a general rise in the dollar against uh, many currencies. Euro is said to reflect that. And of course, the euro's uh, demand might have been uh, to, due to some large uh, bond issuances uh, uh, amounting to 4.5 billion by Germany uh, that was well subscribed. So I think once those demands die down, we will have a euro also if eventually correct towards 1.11 uh, is what I am expecting. On the uh, equities, of course, uh, apart from uh, you know, market actually ignored the mixed economic news, but to focused on uh, very good numbers once again from the major banks yesterday, and uh, that that was behind uh, the uh, rally of uh, Dow by more than one percent, Nasdaq and S and P 500, which were initially uh, not so inspiring, actually uh, ro rose towards the end of the session. Uh, global uh, composite index of stock itself was up by uh, 0 0.5 percent, so there is no threat to the. Uh, you know, risk sentiment uh, so far, which uh, remains quite a bit, uh, bond yields are actually dropping everywhere and the dollar is also correcting upwards. That's a whole scenario, but a lot to look forward to on the inflation front in the Eurozone and in UK, uh, as far as the global economy is concerned. On the rupee, uh, very less inspiring range of uh, 80, 81.99 and uh, 8209 uh, 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 and I mean uh, speculators I think might have gone on an early vacation uh, looking at the way market is moving but uh, I think I would not give up because if you look at some of the factors like um, one year implied wall has it a new you know 15 year low at uh, 4.80 and historically when we are hitting such lows sooner or later there is going to be a big volatility and history says that when walls jump it is the usd on the upside that is more uh, vulnerable and also uh, we are into that period of the year uh, before the election year that is august to october these months actually uh, you know see a big uh, volatility on both sides. Uh, history is uh, behind both these factors, so implied walls as well as you know the uh, uh, in, on the seasonal factor as well. Apart from the fact that while we had a very large 15 to 16 billion inflows, USDINR has not sustained below 82, and all of the uh, either we have had a good amount of demand to you know soak up all the supplies and. Uh, well-known uh, central bank intervention below 82. In fact, uh, buying level from central banks actually gradually moved up from uh, 8170 to 82. Now, uh, with Asian currencies today showing some uh, weakness, uh, I think USDNR is once again set to uh, move towards uh, 82, 20, 25 uh, resistance zone short term. But in medium time, I wouldn't be surprised some larger jump in the USDNR pair is on the cards. Thank you. Thank you, JK. And uh, even yesterday, I had said this, but uh, USD INR uh, continues to disappoint both rupee bulls and bears. But your uh, your word of caution is uh, uh, quite important because one year implied volatility is at fifteen year low, and usually it precedes big moves. So I think it's a it's a good advice for both importers and exporters to not get uh, complacent. While the theme on the global markets was definitely one of uh, dollar recovery, uh, dollars uh, the, the US dollar broadly recovered against uh, the Euro, GBP, and other emerging market uh, currency basket. Uh, US retail sales, uh, which released yesterday, was a mixed picture for the month of June, headline printed weaker, but the control group, which comes under the PCE, it printed higher than expectations. Uh, we saw also the Canadian inflation drop more than expected to 27 month low. And the focus now will of course be on the UK inflation data. It's expected to fall from 8.7% recorded in May. Uh, that's it from us today. Thank you so much for tuning in and look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow. Thank you.